your screen. I'm just going to have to hop off the mic. And uh, you guys are welcome to continue talking amongst yourselves, taking photos and videos. Uh, what? I'll just get off the microphone. Oh, I guess there is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. We'll sit in the back, though. We're good. Oh, where are they going to go? Am I going that one or the... I mean, it's the same thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, this one. Yeah, typically our sets are undressed blank canvases for production to do whatever they want. Okay. Uh, but our sets are decorated with some limited photo ops, all part of the 60th anniversary celebration. Our driver's name is Glenn. Everyone say, hey, Glenn. Hey, Glenn. Hey, Glenn. Come on. It's Glenn. Hi, Glenn. Hi, Glenn. All right, I'll take it. So Glenn is going to be driving us around the studio today. The studio is 400 acres. It's huge. And we're not going to do any walking today because of Glenn. So we're going to say goodbye to the theme park. And we're going to head out into the heart of Hollywood, a real live film and TV studio. We do have a free safety list if you're over before we say goodbye to the skate park. First, if you need guest assistance or have a medical emergency or drop something of value off the side of the train or have any sound or video issues, reach up and grab the red e cord that runs along the center of the ceiling of the train and I'll be back to assist you as soon as it's safe to do so. Otherwise, during the entire tour, please remain seated and keep your arms and legs inside the vehicle at all times. Remember to use the red cord above your head if you need any assistance. The studio is private property, so at any point during the tour, you do drop your phone or just can't wait to use the restroom, pull the cord, and remain seated. Please just welcome you any comment of the studio tour that includes the use of e-cigarettes and be prepared. Our tour today does feature loud noises, sudden tram movements, fire effects, and many water effects. The one happy campers have a great photo opportunities and keep an eye on them so they do not get wet. And finally, for your safety and the safety of those around you, no sloppy sticks will on board the tram. Now we're going to head out. We're going to do our 60th anniversary uh, celebration. There's so much to see out there. But first, let me introduce to you the master ceremonies and the host of the Tonight Show, Mr. Jimmy Fallon. Hi, I'm Jimmy Fallon. Welcome aboard the world famous studio tour. I know what you're thinking. Why the tux? Well, we're celebrating our 60th anniversary. That's right, 60 years of glitz, glamour, and our own great white shark. Oh, as we more, celebrate our diamond more anniversary today, we'll pay tribute to Universal's past and take you behind the scenes to discover why this studio tour is world famous. So whether this is your first visit or your 60th, get ready for fun, excitement, and an experience like no other. That's right, everybody. And now we're officially making our way into the studio. Uh, on March 15, 1915, our founder, Carl Lemley, invited the public into the studio to watch silent movies being made. Guests could walk from set to set and marvel at the new technology involved in filming. But with the invention of sound and the name of quiet on set, the original walking tour ended. But in the 1960s, under the leadership of Chairman Lou Wasserman and executives outdoors, Jason, oh, yes, the idea of reviving the tour yeah. returned. When the Great Line bus tours originating in Hollywood made their stop at our gates, on July 15, 1964, the first of our red and white candy stripe glamour trams took 67 passengers around a two hour drive into our Universal lot, and the world famous studio tour was born. We started with two drivers, two guides, and one ticket seller working out of a trailer on Lancaster Boulevard. And since then, we've expanded with many one of a kind Hollywood elements like the Rock Slide and the Burning House, home to this area in the 1970s and the 1980s. On the right, this is our fire station. We've also got our own sheriff's department, medical personnel, and a zip code. And that's because Universal City is in fact a real city, but a city that's entirely dedicated to making movies. And as we go into the studio, uh, we are going to be passing some active filming today. When we do, I'm going to let you know. I'm going to call it a quiet zone. I'm going to come off the microphone at that time and I'm going to put this graphic on the screen. So feel free to talk amongst yourselves and have your cameras out because you never know what you may see here on the tour. But I will come off the microphone because I don't want to interrupt any of the filming that they're doing. Uh, so the studio itself is broken up into two parts, the front lot and the back lot. And we're going to go to the front lot first. The front lot houses the majority of Universal's 36 sound stages. So a sound stage is just a completely controllable environment that we use for filming. They're capable of keeping out about 98% of sound, and they do 80 to 90% of the filming process inside of the sound stage. On the left here is Sound Stage 12, one of Universal's oldest and largest sound stages. It was once the home of the singing competition, The Voice, for the first few seasons. Uh, Taylor Swift also played the music video for her song Me with Frank Gary inside of there. And it's also been home to movies like Frankenstein, Dracula, and Back to the Future. I am. All of 
go to see for a film inside of Soundstage 12. Coming up on the left, these stages were once home to Hacks with Emmy Award winner Gene Smart, Grand Crew with Nicole Byer, Alfred Hitchcock also used these sound stages to film Psycho, and more recently they've been the home of Bel Air on Peacock. The dramatic retelling of the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, starring Jabari Banks and Ali Shulatin. Leaving the theme behind and answering the front lot where real Hollywood magic is made. How? Well, inside the sound stages that surround us, we can be any kind of environment to scroll in. For the past 60 years, studio tour visitors have driven right by these buildings, and inside these walls, the sets from your favorite TV shows and movies have transported audiences anywhere the imagination can take you, even to a palatial mansion in Bel Air. When we film Bel Air, we love coming out of the sound stages and seeing the trams filled with excited guests as they drive by. So, uh, keep an eye out. You never know who. Or what? You'll see on the studio tour. Coming up on the left-hand side is Soundstage 14, Bel Air. They've actually partially filmed inside of there, as well as the Save by the Bell reboot, The Mindy Project, Superstore with America Ferreira, and some classic movies like How the Grinch Stole Christmas, Apollo 13, and Jurassic Park. These stages have also been home to a lot of classic shows throughout the years. Shows like Martin, The Jeffersons, Coach, One Day at a Time, Never Have I Ever, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, and Desperate Housewives, just to name a few. Now we're coming up on that quiet zone. I'm going to come off the microphone for a moment, but I'll be back for you. But keep your eyes peeled. Never know what you may see. This one. Folks, we're now out of that quiet zone. Thanks for bearing with us on that. On the left hand side, we have some production offices to some of the biggest companies here in Hollywood. So these are actually the offices for companies like Elizabeth Banks' Brownstone Productions. They made Pitch Perfect. In the back, right over here on the left, you can see Martin Platt Productions, and they're in the process of working on the two part movie musical for Wicked, which is set to star Cynthia Arrivo, Ariana Grande, and Jeff Goldblum. First movie is slated to come out in November. So these are all production offices. Also coming up on the left, a few more of our sound stages. These sound stages are currently home to Lopez vs. Lopez, starring George Lopez and his real-life daughter, Mayan Lopez. They've also been home to the 2016 Hairspray Live competition shows like World of Dance and America's Got Talent, and also the final season of Will & Grace was filmed inside of these sound stages. But we do 80 to 90% of the filming process inside of the sound stages. But sometimes it's not enough to film inside of a sound, side, sound stage. Sometimes you need to bring to life the magic of New York, or maybe London, but you can't go all the way over there. Well, when we move away from the front lot, we turn to the back lot. And the back lot is what houses the majority of Universal's major exterior city scapes that we're going to see next. We're about to cross the imaginary boundary onto the back lot. 
where we have exterior set for many outdoor scenes. Over the last 60 years, studio tour guests have seen these locations turned into big cities, quiet suburbs, even that guy's hometown. Yeah, that guy. But for countless movies and TV shows. This is Universal's Metro Sets. And we're Metro Sets. You've seen these in Bruce Almighty with Jim Carrey. You've seen this area in Changeling with Angelina Jolie, Gone Girl with Ben Affleck, Michael Jackson's black and white music video was filmed right over here on these brownstones. The hospital on the right hand side is being used for an upcoming sitcom called St. Dennis Medical. And you've also seen this brownstone apartment in Home Alone 2, Lost in New York with Kevin McAllister through Bricks of the Sticky Bandits. Now we're going to move away from our brownstone street and take a look at one of the most iconic areas here on the back lot. Welcome to the Courthouse Square. These sets were used to create Hill Valley in the Back to the Future films. And they represented multiple time periods, 1985, 1955, and the far, far distant future, 2015. To this day, this is one of the most popular sets on the Universal Studio Tour. We had a lot of fun making those films here on the lot. I wonder what it would be like to go back to those days. If only we had a time machine. Hey, everybody. Do you think we can get this tram up to 88 miles per hour? See you, See you in the, in the future. future. Ladies and gentlemen, we are entering Hill Valley from the Back to the Future film starring Michael J. Fox, Christian Fulloy, Leo Thompson. This is Courthouse Square, and that is our very own time machine. Welcome to the courthouse. It was actually no, the back lot of the courthouse square on break. that inspired the entire climax to Back to the Future. I had scenes up on the clock tower on that ledge. It was a ledge about that wide. And I was standing inside looking at the ledge. And I already had the vertigo. I just thought there's no way in the world, no way I'm going to stand on that. I was up there for quite a while. Of course, I had a cable. <laughs> Now you've seen our courthouse square in the first episode of The Twilight Zone, Where Is Everybody, My Nutty Professor, To Kill a Mockingbird, Rutherford Falls, Bruce Almighty with Jim Carrey, and most recently you've seen this as Boston in the TED series. As we round the corner, we're turning on to New York Street. Now New York Street, you've seen it as New York in Spider-Man with Andrew Garfield, as well as Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. He was using his downtown LA and the Transformers when Shia LaBeouf ran down the street with the Oscar and all those buildings exploded behind him. Uh, it was London for Austin Powers to spy his shaggy. Fast and Furious presents Hobbs and Shaw. It was Chicago and the Blues Brothers Baltimore and Hairspray Live. Gotham City and George Clooney's Batman. And it was for a lot of pop stars throughout the years. Uh, like Britney Spears filmed a music video here in 2011 for her song I Wanna Go. Taylor Swift filmed Wildest Dreams out here. Lady Gaga filmed The Edge of Glory out here. Justin Bieber, Chris Brown, Pink, Billie Eilish. More recently, Jennifer Lopez used these streets for her This Is Me Now music video. And our metro sets give uh, production a lot of flexibility, and that's because the buildings are made out of plywood, plastic, fiberglass, materials that we can swap out interchangeably in case we need to completely change up the aesthetic of our metro sets. So plywood, plastic, fiberglass, and the buildings are made up with what's called a forced perspective. It gives the illusion that the buildings are much taller than they actually are. For example, all of the buildings are made what's called 100% to scale on the ground level. So everything where we are now is built the way it would be in a normal city or a neighborhood near you. But all of the dimensions of the buildings drop 15% for every level that you look up. So that means all the windows and the bricks get a little bit smaller the higher up you look. It helps us give the illusion of distance and it helps us give the illusion that the buildings are much taller than they actually are. They're only about 50 feet tall. All of our streets out here, they're also all curved. Gives the illusion that the streets go on and on forever, but you're really just here on our very own metro set. More recently, you've seen this as downtown uh, uh, LA in NBC's American Ninja Warriors, where they'll set up obstacle courses to take up the entirety of our sets. Uh, this is also used in the new Quantum Leap reboot, and of course, this was Boston in the TED series on Peacock. Hi everyone, Seth McFarland here, and I'm excited to share with you a behind-the-scenes look at my Peacock original event series, TED. It's a prequel series set in 1993. 
that means our skilled craftspeople had to build a high school, a house, and even recreate downtown Boston as it looked back in the day using exterior sets and facades that you're about to see on the tour. But I should warn you, Ted is intended for mature audiences only. So grown-ups, tell the kids to go in the other room before you watch. Oh, come on! Our metro sets give us complete control over the environment in case we need to do stunts as well. Uh, for example, when you saw Spider-Man with Tobey Maguire, on the right-hand side there's that black building with the gold trimming. Well, that's where Peter Parker and MJ were having tea when MJ was like, Do you love me, Peter? And then Doc Ock threw a car through the building. They did that right here on our back block, completely destroying our sets, but we can do that here. And also in the Blues Brothers, when they dropped the Pinto from the top of our buildings and dug this gigantic hole in the really? street, that was right here on the back lot. You can't actually do stuff like that in Chicago. When the Pinto fell and you saw it land and make this big hole in the street, that was on the back lot. You dropped it from a crane. You dig like that in Chicago, you not good idea. When people ask me all the movies I've ever done, what is the most satisfying and the most fun, I've got to say Blues Brothers. We got to sing, we got to dance, got to drive and train with the best stunt people in the world, and, and got to be an actor and a writer. So it was a good piece of work. Danny called John America's guest because just didn't walk into anybody's house. During the shooting of the movie, John was missing, we couldn't find him. Danny went off looking for him and saw a light on in his one house in the back Oh, John, yeah, he's on my couch. And he had a snack a couple hours ago and he's sleeping. He was America's guest. I mean, literally that happened. Most recently, you've seen our Metro sets in the new Maxine movie that just came out a few weeks ago. So if you haven't seen it, go check it out. You'll see our Metro sets. You'll recognize it clear as day. But we're going to move away from the concrete jungle. Coming up on the right hand side, you're going to see a piece of studio tour history. This is the collapsing bridge of the runaway train. The collapsing bridge was actually a mechanical effect. The trams used to cross and the hydraulic support things would split and then the bridge would collapse and run the tram. But we make it off on the other end of the bridge in the last moment. And then the runaway train is once part of our western sets. And even though these are two studio tour attractions, we have actually filmed things with it. The Six Million Dollar Man and the original Quantum Leap series. Now it looks like we're in for a little bit of a detour, folks. We're going to take a quick trip to the jungle. It's the original King Kong that, that, that made me want to be the original spy. I saw that maybe on TV when I was I like films that just take you away from your own real life and sweep you up the edge. Kong literally does that. I mean, you're on board the ship, you're sailing to a lost island, you encounter monsters and creatures from, you know, prehistoric times. I can't believe it. So I was thrilled when Universal invited me back to Skull Island. And it's great to have you along for the ride. Now, we have created this 3D immersive experience, so you're going to have to have your glasses ready. Don't put them on yet, but just have them in your hand because we're about to return to Skull Island. We really put a lot of thought into the character and personality of Kong, and he's so much more than a monster. In fact, he's not a monster, even though he is an incredibly majestic, ancient creature. He's a force of nature. He's old, he's wise, he's proud, he's fierce, and obviously he has a heart. At this time, folks, make sure you have your 3D glasses. You're going to need them in just a moment. Please remain seated throughout the attraction and security of this item you may have. Welcome to Skull Island.
and gentlemen, King Kong 363B. So hold on to those 3D glasses, you'll need them again later on. Now, King Kong 360 3D was actually made with some of the most advanced technology that we have built for it. The screens you saw are 40 feet tall and 180 feet wide, and the visual effects were made by Peter Jackson's team over at Wetter Digital. And Wetter Digital has also worked on movies like King Kong, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, Avatar, The Hunger Games, Wonder Woman, The Avengers, and Disney's The Little Mermaid and many more. What you experienced was actually 52 minutes of a feature film wrapped up in a two minute attraction. Now if anybody took the tour back in the day, the original King Kong attraction was a little bit different. The King Kong attraction once resided in our metropolitan sets. So here to tell you about the original King Kong attraction, we have one of the stars of Universal's 2005 movie, King Kong, Jack Black. And South Action, did you know the Metro sets were once the home to Hollywood's biggest star? Right here is where the original studio tour King Kong attraction resided from 1986 until 2008. He stood 30 feet tall and weighed in at 13,000 pounds. Over the years, millions of guests got to meet King Kong face to face as he shook the tram. So close you could feel his hot banana bread. Now, King Kong, he might be someone that you would consider to be a movie monster. Well, movie monsters actually kept our studio afloat during the Great Depression. So, movie monsters are really, really our thing here. It's part of the bread and butter of our studio. Coming up on the right, you're seeing our monster mural that was made by street artist Tristan Eaton to help us celebrate classic monsters like Frankenstein, Dracula, the Bride of Frankenstein, and the Wolfman. An instrumental part of the process of designing these murals was getting to go to the Universal Archive. Going there, I got to see in person props from the movies, photos from behind the scenes, original illustrations from those movie posters, all this stuff. Uh, I had an early affection for movie monsters. I was always fascinated by the magic behind making movies, but I fell in love with zombie movies and monster movies as a young kid. My world that I come from is Skateboarding, TV, comic books. You always have to pay homage to where that art form started. And for me, it started with painting stuff in the street illegally. You know, tagging billboards and dumpsters. You know, without that, I never would be here using spray paint like this. Coming up on the left hand side, a few more of our sound stages. Sound stages 30 and 31. Well, that's where the voice does their blind auditions these days. Right next door, those stages were once home to American Song Contest with Kelly Clarkson and Snoop Dogg, as well as Jordan Peele's film Us and Nope. But the body of water right in front of those sound stages is what we call the Hollywood Ocean. And here in 1974, we added the parting of the Red Seas to the studio tour, inspired by the classic Paramount picture of the Ten Commandments, in which the star of the movie, Charlton Heston, who would make an appearance in Part the water for our guests and give everybody an onboard sea level view of all the action in the lake. This tram is overloaded. Tell them they can walk on water. It's part of the tour. And that Hollywood Ocean is also where we filmed the creature from the Black Lagoon, one of our many monster movies. And our legacy of monster films starts with Dracula in 1931 and is set to continue next year in Orlando with the Dark Universe, a universal epic universe. Get ready for that. But we're going to look at where it all began for those classic movie monsters, Middle Europe. This is where we filmed Frankenstein, Dracula, The Crown of Frankenstein, The Wolfman, The Invisible Man, The Hunchback of Notre Dame. All of them were done right over here. These sets were also used to film our first Academy Award winner for Best Picture, All Quiet on the Western Front. But more recently, you would recognize these sets from all four seasons of The Good Place, starring Kristen Bell and Ted Danson. You, Eleanor Shellstrom, are dead. 
cool. This location, the afterlife. I've never ever seen this. You're in the good place. I'm not supposed to be here. I can't risk going to the bad place. <laughs> Maybe it's not all that bad. Yeah, how can I help you? What is the bad place like? Well, it doesn't sound awesome. These sets were also used as Jamilia in the Princess Diaries 2 Royal Engagement, and they were also uh, used for Pirates of the Caribbean Curse of the Black Pearl as Port Royale. But we really remember our European sets for filming all of our classic movie monsters here, like Frankenstein, Dracula, The Bride of Frankenstein, all those classic movie monsters. Dracula, Frankenstein, The Mummy, Chris Frankenstein, Jane, it's one of the great icons of the world. That to me was like the essence of the universal horror film. And I was just mesmerized by the movie. Boris Karloff, Lon Chaney. I remember the original Universal Studios Mummy movie really scaring me. It's still ringing on me right now. And you know, at this time, folks, we're approximately at the halfway mark of the tour, and we will be returning to the theme park shortly. So, if you have an emergency, reach out, grab the ID cord, and I'll be back to assist you as soon as it's safe to do so. Now, we're getting in to go inside of a sound stage. Welcome to Sound Stage 50. Sound Stage 50 is an example of what we call on set, which is all dressed and ready to go for production. And as you can tell, the cameras are out, lighting's up, hair and makeup is just across the way, there's costumes, and, well, they're just waiting for their Hollywood star, which is going to be you guys today. Welcome, we're going to put you in the movies. So Sound Stage 50 is also one of our most unique... Studio tour, complete with the Hollywood makeover to bring all of the props and the movie making equipment into the 21st century. That attraction was made with inspiration from Universal's 1974 blockbuster movie, Earthquake. But in 1975, Universal reprised its role as the monster movie capital of the world when we released Jaws in theaters, directed by Mr. Steven Spielberg. 
You may remember that Jaws takes place on Amity Island off the coast of Martha's Vineyard. Well, we have our very own slice of Amity Island right here on the back lot. So we're going to take you to the beach. We're going to take you on a vacation. So welcome to Amity, where every day is like the 4th of July. And I know, I know, they used to have a shark problem out here. And wait a minute, what is that music? Do you hear that music? That reminds me of the movie Jaws. Weird. Anyway, at least the Amity police are on this scene, so if anybody feels unsafe, we just want to talk to them. Our police talk with the water, his name is Pete, by the way. Hey, Pete, how's it going? Oh, for Pete's sake. Could it be another shark here in Amity? No. Too good for Pete. We're gonna clear the area, folks. We're gonna hide. We're gonna go behind these very flammable gasoline tanks because honestly, that's all I got right now. I'm just a tour guide. I'm trying to keep you guys safe, but not an expert. I'm not going to wait for these sharks. Oh, man. Not looking too good. My plan is gonna look good flames. We're gonna need a bigger tram. Movie Jaws. That shark was being and tested in fresh water. So when they brought that shark off the coast of Martha's Vineyard to film, the salt water destroyed his engines on the very first day of filming and he sunk to the bottom of the ocean. That's why they nicknamed the shark Flaws. That's a much maligned shark. The shark was frustrating. It didn't really work all the time. It didn't work hardly at all. Wherever you were on the island, you could hear the radio. They were always saying, the shark is not working. The shark is not working. We're just waiting. We're just waiting. The shark is working. Low confidence. The wild are increasing. So I think it's going to be a lot of good. You know, I think Steven Spielberg turned out just fine. Moving away from that. Let's take a look at old Mexico. Here to tell you about the action out here, we have the Today Show's co host and weather anchor, Al Roker. Favorite part of the tour, weather. When it comes to film and TV, it is truly a special effect. In fact, to demonstrate how weather effects are created, we debuted our first major attraction here on the studio tour way back in 1968. Welcome to the only part of the back lot with a 100% chance of rain. The Flash Flood. As we move away from old Mexico, coming up on the right, you're going to see Amity Island once more as we pass by. Now, Amity Island was actually off the coast of Martha's Vineyard, but this was actually Cabot Cove, Maine, in Murder, She Wrote, with Angela Lansbury. This was also used to film a few scenes of The Good Place and some Key and Peele sketches throughout the years. But here to tell you about how the Jaws attraction came to be, we're going to bring back Mr. Steven Spielberg. The Jaws ride was 
almost the inevitable result of the size of the box office when Jaws first opened uh, in June of 1975. And that was really the first time I ever got involved in the creation of a ride. It was a great honor to be invited into a creative circle of tremendous designers at Universal. They were trying to figure out how to replicate what the movie had done to audiences in a real way by building a physical shark that would come out of the water and terrify tourists as they were sitting in the trance. And the most amazing thing about the Jaws ride is it is exactly as it was from the time it was first placed on the Universal lot. There have been tweaks, of course, over the years, but it is essentially what the designers and myself all envisioned and created. the left hand side you're actually seeing the line of state signs this is actually where marty mcfly lived during the back to the future trilogy live at the home of tomorrow today and those are a recreation of the original signs but believe it or not one of the executive producers of back to the future was steven spielberg and universal's had a long working relationship with the academy award winning director that really dates back to the early days of the studio tour my entire career began with my relationship with Universal Studios just as a high school kid on a tour bus. Remember in those days there weren't trams, there were buses called the Grey Line Tour Bus. And I was so excited and thrilled to be on the lot. It was my first time ever on a movie studio lot. And during a bathroom break, I hid in the bathroom. And when everybody left to get back on the bus, I waited another 15 minutes until I'm sure the bus left. And then I had the entire lot to myself that day. And in those days, movie lots were so crowded because all movies were made on film lots. Say they're made all over the world, on locations, but most of it was focused in those days, in the 60s, on the film lots. So nobody noticed me when I was going around from soundstage to soundstage. And I really felt, in my own young way, I owned the lot and had the most amazing day of my life. Next up, we're going to take a look at one of Steven Spielberg's most elaborate sets. This comes from his 2005 movie, War of the Worlds. And if anybody has seen that movie, you may recall that in the first five minutes of the film, there's a plane crash. Well, we have the plane crash set from that film. This set is made out of 100% real 747 aircraft. It's a real plane that was purchased and deconstructed just for the opening sequence of War of the Worlds. To get this plane here, they had to cut it in four pieces and saw off the top because it wouldn't fit under any LA overpasses. And get this, it was used in less than five minutes of War of the Worlds. Motel, which is the home of the Step on the Lot experience. For the first few decades of the studio tour, one of the hallmarks was a visit to the Prop Plaza, where guests could disembark for once in a lifetime photos of characters, sets, and picture cars from some of their favorite productions. Well, we've brought that back for the 60th anniversary of the tour. So if you want any photos, maybe with the scale Hollywood sign that's on your right, this is your opportunity to step on the lot. Make sure you scan the QR codes posted throughout the prop plaza for the augmented reality filters. As you disembark the, tr the tram, please take all your personal belongings with you. Bring your 3D glasses. You will need them when you resume the tour. You'll be boarding a different tram with a different guide and a different driver. So please take all those personal belongings with you. You'll need them when you resume the tour. Have a good time as you visit the prop plaza, folks, and enjoy the rest of your day here at Universal Studios. Yeah. 
Once again, for anybody who missed it, my name is Anthony. I'm going to be your tour guide today. Your driver's name is Glenn. We're going to be taking you the rest of the way. I hope you're having a good time with us so far. And as we head back into the studio, we have a few more things we want to show you. So, we're here to introduce the next portion of the tour. We have Academy Award winning director, Jordan Peele. I remember going to Universal Studios when I was 12 years old, feeling this feeling of wonder. I mean, one of my first trips to Universal Studios, seeing the Jaws ride, uh, one of my favorite movies of all time. Just feeling like, that's him. That's the Jaws. Like, I don't even know if that is the Jaws. I, 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 I hope it is. <laughs> Sharing a space with Hitchcock and Spielberg, I couldn't be more proud. Up, we're going to take a look at one of these sets from Jordan Peele's most recent sci-fi thriller, Nope. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Jupiter's Flame. Movie magic only happens when a team of collaborators, often in the hundreds, work together to take an impossible mission and bring it to life. Now this is Jupiter's Plane, a nostalgic, small-time Southern California amusement park owned by former child star Ricky G. Over there, look into the winking well and have your picture taken just like the kids in that old 90s movie kids here. That's what this whole place is loosely based on. Remember that one? No? But a little further down, you can see the brand new Star Lasso Experience. Built to showcase an unbelievable new live show. It's not looking so live. Yeah, what, what? It's just a chair. It is smack dab in the center of the UFO hotspot. Jupiter's clan. To find out what happens next, you're going to have to see Nope. It's currently on Amazon Prime. And as we leave Jupiter's clan behind, we're heading toward a part of the studio which once had an attraction called the Duke Glacier Expedition, better known as the Ice Tunnel. It was featured in an episode of the Six Million Dollar Man with Blue Majors and Andre the Giant as Bigfoot. The tram would climb an imaginary elevation of 12,000 feet. The only way back to the theme park was through the ice tunnel. But now this area is currently home to the largest 3D attraction in the world in the finale of the studio tour today, Fast and Furious Supercharge. So what we're going to do next, we're going to put you in the movies. We're going to put you in one of the most popular movie franchises of all time. In order to be the stars of the mini trailer main scene, make sure you have your 3D glasses and take this opportunity to secure any loose items that you may have. Things might get a little bumpy while we're out there. But don't worry, folks, we are going to get a little bit of assistance from our Fast and Furious family. My name is Roman Pierce. Pleased to meet you. Money Hobbs asks us to stash you with some new show of wow. Brought you in our secret spot. We're going to keep Shaw from finding you, but to keep you safe, we'll need your help. We don't want the syndicate tracking us here, so put away your cameras and turn off your cell phones. One flash or one ringtone will give us a word. I need you all to take this real serious. Okay, the next day, we'll you.
doing? This is the race day after party. And the, where, where the other? Roman Pierce. Roman Pierce. FBI, don't move. Neil, that's right, party's over. You know how long I took to iron this shirt, man? I'm, I'm not. You're under arrest right now. Ladies, just, just back up a little bit. I got it. It's lightweight. First of all, I don't work for you. Oh, really? Well, tell me, Roman, who do you work for? We don't work for nobody. Cop, I suggest you clear out of here, otherwise we can't guarantee your safety. Guarantee my safety? I'm the one holding the gun. Yeah, but mine's a whole lot bigger than yours. Hobbs, escort this now, Miss Hobbs. Let's go, Cookie Puss! You got an ugly suit on, man. It's cheap. Somebody out there really pissed off Shaw. It's gonna get ugly fast. Yeah, don't worry. Lucky for you, our whole family will protect you. Are you kidding me, Roman? You didn't shut off your phone, bro? I gotta call you back. I'm just, I'm gonna know this guy. You see what I'm talking about? Call you back. Man. It was on vibrate. Shaw traced us. Hops can't hold it forever. Buddy. Rock and we're up. <sighs> Try to move my vehicle. It's about to get real interesting. I'm on the lease, it's all so warmed it's up, it's right next door. Welcome, grab your truck. I need you and Lenny ready to roll. Entertainment changes and how we experience it. We'll always be here at the studio tour to show you how it's done. The studio tour is your opportunity to be your merchant destinations and experiences. The 
two the Atlanta Trail and around the back lot in the summer of 1964. The development is so much more, including seven theme parks around the world and the upcoming Epic Universe, a Universal Epic Universe, opening next year in Orlando. To the owners, to be the tour drivers, guides, and ambassadors throughout our history who helped make this world tour famous. Thank you so much. To our pass holders, thank you so much for being with us today. If you're not a pass holder, head on over to the Universal Box Office where you can upgrade your day ticket to an annual pass. Treat and come back again and again. And to purchase any of the movies you saw on our tour, visit www.uphe.com or visit one of our retail stores. Also check out the QR codes once you get off the track and check out Fandango at home. Yeah. And on behalf of all of us here at Universal, my name is Anthony, your driver's name is Glenn. We hope you've enjoyed your exclusive look into the Hollywood experience that's only 60 years in the making. And we hope you enjoy the rest of your day here at Universal Studios Hollywood. And as we say here in Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen, that's a wrap. Thank you, Frank. Now, let's have a fantastic rest of your time in the park, everybody.